Good evening, friends. We'll get started in a couple minutes. Give it a few minutes to let people join into the uh, chat and uh, join the live stream. Okay, let's get started here. How to simplify your storyboard drawings, mastering the basics with me, Paul Angele. Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? I hope you're doing well. Hey, thanks for uh, clicking on uh, the thumbnail over here and joining this live stream. Whether you're joining us live uh, here tonight or if you're watching this on the replay. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy day uh, to watch Polly here uh, talk about storyboarding and uh, hope to give you some great value in tonight's lesson. Uh, this is part of our Mastering the Basics series on uh, Tuesday nights. And uh, this one we're going to be talking about how to simplify your storyboard drawings. How, how do you get the work done and uh, how to go forward uh, with what you're doing. Uh, I was inspired uh, to uh, create a little bit of story. We, we I was inspired by uh, one of the viewers out there uh, wrote me a, a comment and I'm going to share that with you real quick. Let me uh, turn this off and go to my um, our little comment real quick. I had a, a bunch of comments that just came in recently and uh, uh, Ruben Almazan8238, thanks so much. Appreciate you watching uh, and I appreciate the comment on there. But I got a comment from um, at host98 and at host98 uh, had a comment and said storyboarding content gets a suspiciously low amount of views in my opinion. Also, any advice for learning how to draw aimed at this type of work, like some an anatomy shorthands and such? I'm thinking gestures and shapes uh, look to be more significant in nailing them, uh, like in depth anatomy. Um, well, this uh, I, I want to appreciate uh, at host 98 reaching out to me and uh, inspired me to for uh, tonight's uh, live stream. And uh, let me go ahead and uh, put a little bit of contrast on that comment. I just thought it was a really cool comment. I really appreciate you uh, putting that comment out uh, at host98. So I was thinking about this comment, and uh, I was like, you know, what what can we learn from storyboarding? What what different things can we do differently? Um, how can I help you, uh, budding storyboard artists out there, you know, and sort of look at this in a different perspective? I think it was a great comment. I really appreciated it, um, and uh, I, th I think it's uh, important to talk about um, simplicity, you know, in terms of your drawings. We see a lot of these boards out there, whether you're looking at the art of books and things like that, and they're just amazing artwork you know, of these final production pieces. Uh, but when you're storyboarding, thumbnailing, doing roughs and those type of things, uh, you need line economy. You need to, to get to the point. And we're going to be talking over uh, some of my tips and tricks and things that I've learned and uh, how I can help you uh, get better. But if we've never met before, my name is Paul Anjali. I'm a live action storyboard artist. I created this YouTube channel going to, yeah, it's, uh, today is the 30th, or yeah, 30th today. So this is the... Uh, one more day for the month of January, but uh, this signifies our 49th live stream we've done together for the last four months. And I re really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day, uh, whether it's your work day, school day, or just wanting to learn and learn about more about visual storytelling and joining me on these live stream chats. I'm so looking forward to you know, the future of this channel where we can take it. And I appreciate like-minded people like you joining in with the uh, 
the channel and how uh, we can help the, together grow this. And uh, I created this channel just to share my experiences and processes as a live action storyboard artist. I've done everything from animation to comic books to design to, you know, uh, film, video, music videos, all sorts of stuff. So it's sort of fun for me to sort of take a, a step back and... Uh, you know, hang out with you good friends out there and teach you. Um, let me go over our sort of program that we have uh, throughout the week to share with you. Uh, so there's a lot of value coming at you three days a week. On Tuesdays, we have days like today where this is our storyboarding mastering the basic series. And uh, on the storyboarding mastering the basic series, um, what we're sort of focused on is just the basics. It's your tutorial, how to, um, you know, I do a lot of tutorials, demonstrations, uh, give some tips and tricks and uh, those type of items on Tuesdays. Then on Thursdays, I host uh, our Sketching After Hours. Sketching After Hours is a pretty cool session. Um, I have fun with it. Um, I think it's super important for you to take the time. Let me grab my sketchbook over here, one of them. I think it's super important for you uh, artists out there, take your time to do uh, exploration, um, take your notes, uh, you know, whether it be journaling and those type of things uh, through your sketchbook. I have a routine every day I'm drawing in my sketchbook. Nothing to do with work, nothing to do with the YouTube channel, just drawing for drawing's sake. And I think it's super important for you to take the time uh, to, to scribble out some drawings each each and every day. Uh, I was talking to another pro friend of mine and we were like, you know, we don't say, it's not so much teaching yourself how to draw. We sort of we use the expression of you're exploring, you're exploring new artists. And we're going to be talking about a few different artists today on how to simplify your drawings to get things done. But I think it's super important. Join me on uh, Thursdays. Uh, we go over a lot of uh, actual drawing tutorials and things like that for those who are just getting into the, the business of storyboarding and those just getting into art you know and, and we've had some great success with uh, a lot you know I think uh, some of the gesture drawings human form facial features facial gestures uh, female bodies male bodies you know I think there's a lot of uh, education and uh, fun there for you to learn from go check out the playlist uh, if you'd like to learn more uh, about that on the YouTube channel then on um, Saturdays we have our storyboard jam sessions uh, I really enjoy the jam sessions um, this is a time where I just sit down and just start storyboarding and having some fun with you good friends in terms of uh, just picking out a topic. We've, uh, I think last week we did the, uh, uh, the mummy, uh, and so we did our own take on a mummy uh, sort of storyboard session there and sort of drew from there. So I'm going to turn that off real quick. And then uh, I'm going to leave you with my contact information and we'll check the chat in a second, see who's joining us tonight. And then we'll go forward with what our uh, tutorial was about tonight. So if you'd like to get in touch with me, uh, you can reach me at uh, my email address, which is mr.paul.angeli at gmail.com. That's my main email contact for business inquiries or if you just want to get in touch with me. And then uh, also my website at www.paulangeli.com, and you find my website right there. And then, uh, you know, I always ask a lot of, uh, you know, friends watching the channel or those that are doing some of the homework assignments, go ahead, share your work with me. I'd love to see what you're working on right now. And uh, you can reach me on Instagram. My handle is pretty easy to find at Paul Angeli. Uh, and then uh, over here on the YouTube uh, channel. So there's the contact information stay in touch i think it's important for like-minded people to stay in touch i've mentored and helped a lot of people so um reach out at any time and again let's take a look at the chat and see who's joining in i got a host what's up how you doing host hey great question i really appreciate you taking the time to to write to me and so uh you inspired me my friend and uh, we're going to be talking about how to how to simplify your storyboard drawings you know, what are some cheats and cheat codes and hacks and simple tips to help you level up your game, get your boards done quickly and more efficiently in your line economy. And sort of we're going to talk about, you know, drawing figures and drawing, you know, some stuff and, you know, we'll do a little sequence together and sort of have fun with that. So host, thanks so much. Uh, you helped to inspire tonight's episode. So thanks so much, buddy. 
Uh, and then Tracy, hey Tracy, Tracy Mui, hey, how's it going? So I'm gonna leave a question to you, host and Tracy. Uh, what, what are you good folks working on? Are you a storyboard artist? Are you working on uh, comics? What, what, are you working in the animation industry? What are you guys currently working on? Just curious. Raise it up in the chat. I think it's great to have great dialogue in our chats. I've had, I'm waiting for our other friends to join in uh, throughout the night if they can. Everybody pops in at certain times. Um, and uh, just curious if uh, what you guys are working on and what you're up to. Let me take a sip of my drink here and we'll get going. I give you guys a second there to write back. Yeah, I try to, I try to keep this open um, dialogue going with everybody. So drop a comment, drop a little text back and forth, uh, you know, and uh, I'll take breaks every now and then and read your comments. If you have a question or something like that, I can answer those questions for you too. Okay, so um, let's talk about storyboarding in general, okay? Um, storyboarding, you know, there's, there's, I wish I could say it was easy, but there's so many different things a storyboard artist needs to know rather than if I'm just a uh, animator or I'm just a, you know, an illustrator and I'm drawing a single picture and uh, it, it's a complicated process and there's so many different facets uh, that go into storyboarding. Uh, you know, you have to know your, your cinematography. You need to know the, the language of cinema. So if I'm talking about, you know, uh, extreme wide shot, what does that mean? Or I'm talking about, uh, you know, extreme close up or I'm talking about a tilt or a pan or a tracking shot. I think we need to think like a director of a film and uh, that is super important. Also too, we, we, we need to understand acting, you know, uh, and that's where anime, folks in the animation industry have, have a little bit of a give there because they're working in gesture, they're working in body language, they're working on facial expressions, they're, you know, and I, and I think it's super important because we want those characters to act a little bit in terms of our storyboards because the, you know, and the other part would just be is it's just a little bit, a tad bit, a little sprinkle, the magic fairy dust of animation, because we're showing, um, unlike comic books, where you're going from panel to panel to panel, and there's a gutter, so your mind is making up what is that in between in that shot, where an animator has to animate each of those, you know, uh, shots and their keyframes, you know, and their in betweens. Us storyboard artists, we need to show every shot. In unison, you know, it's, it's not going to be made up, you know, or how are we transitioning from uh, one sequence to another? So there's a, a lot to do with it. So, um, but what's cool about being a storyboard artist is that we're setting the tone for the film or the animation. Uh, so, some uh, cartoon shows are animation board driven, other are board driven. Others are you're going off of a screenplay, whether if you're doing a live action film. Uh, you know, uh, or, you know, you, it, it might be a commercial where you're going off uh, more of a beat, uh, beat board scenario of what you're trying to do. But what we're doing is we're creating that visual structure uh, to help uh, set the blueprint. You know, we're helping the director and when we're talking live action. We're, we're, we're working with the screenplay. We're interpreting the screenplay. We're working with the director hand in hand and putting the first visuals together of what the uh, film sequence or the film would be what it's going to look like. And it sort of sets the blueprint with the rest of the crew members because we work in a super collaborative environment. We're working with all different, you know, from the, 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 the actors to the, the cinematographer to the stunt coordinator uh, to the, you know, costume design to the special effects to the practical effects to the, you know, uh, 3D wizard. Everybody, you're working on it, but what you're doing is you're setting the blueprint. And there's plenty of shots online of us storyboard artists working, having all our storyboards out, either pinned up on the board or they're on a table or they're in a Bible and everybody's flipping through it to get an idea of what's going on, what are we shooting today, and in terms of, uh, you know, the sequence and what we're doing. So it makes it super important that 
we as storyboard artists are super efficient with our lines. Hey, listen, I, 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 it gets the best of me at some times too. And I sit there and I noodle the heck of a, out of a shot. But you got to remember that shot is only going to be up for a few seconds. And I have to be ready to go for iterations of that shot. So maybe the, the, the director, I, I'm pitching my, my, my roughs to the director and the director says, Hey, Polly, you know, I like this shot, but how about we do it like this? Or remember that movie? Hey, in that movie, let's do it like that, you know? And I think it's super important uh, to be flexible. And if I put all this time into this beautiful piece and all of a sudden it gets cut from the film, you know? And so we want to be economical with our line choices and, uh, you know, push that line economy. Because the most important part is we want to tell a good story. And we want that audience to be engaged and, and feel something and feel emotion and... Um, be a part of that journey of these characters within the journey. Let's go back over to the chat real quick. I see it scrolling through, so uh, let's read a little bit. Cool. So I got uh, Tracy. Tracy says, I'm a freelance illustrator and animator and a recent graduate, but are learning storyboarding a bit more. Cool, cool. Welcome to the channel. Thanks so much for dropping by. Uh, don't forget, right now I got like 49 different uh, live streams we've done so far. Go over all different aspects of storyboarding and uh, I'm looking forward to bringing out more stuff and more shorter, impactful sort of uh, storyboarding videos. So uh, for the folks that don't have time to hang out with me for a few hours or an hour or so, for these live streams that you can get sort of the important parts that you need and get that value quickly. So, um, cool. Where'd you go to school? Curious, Tracy. Shout it out in the chat. Where did you go to school? Um, I used to teach college, so it's like, it was fun. I enjoyed it. That's why I started the YouTube channel, so I can teach here. <laughs> So, and then Ho said, uh, found, uh, when I found out what storyboarding was, I knew it was a path for me, a mix of cinematography and visual storytelling without having to make, uh, like fully finished art got me super interested. Yeah, that's, you know, that, that's a, that's awesome. You know, that's what we do, you know, um, you know, I'm not doing finished final pieces and we're going to talk about some tips and tricks to make it fast and efficient for you. And, uh, you know, maybe sometimes I'll do more of a finished, if, if, if my work is going into a book or something like that, yeah, I'll have a finished, cool, sweet piece. Or um, if I'm doing something for an advertising agency where they want it full-blown color, they want the beat boards, you know, or you're, you're working on a project before it gets greenlit and they say, hey, we don't have any concept people, I want to see more of a concept-y design to what you're doing so there, there's some times there where you will need to to produce some final artwork but most of the time we're, we're doing we're doing uh, you know rough work we're doing some thumbnails it's usually line art with uh some basic tone values to it so we're going to be talking about that today but uh, i'm excited for you host uh congratulations on the uh the, the choice of career path and interesting and uh hopefully uh this channel can help you uh learn what you need to learn it's so cool and then Tracy said, continue, wasn't able to learn boarding as much, really found a passion in it when I uh, took my last class. Isn't that always the case? You, you're, you're in college, you're doing all your work, and then you take one class, and it's like, dang, darn it, I could have did a little bit more. I remember when I was working on my undergraduate degree uh, before I went in for my master's, and I, I was just like, I, I, I was went to school to become a doctor. I wanted to become a surgeon. And uh, I was like, oh, this is going to be sweet. And I had a buddy tell me, hey, Polly, why don't you take uh, this 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 new computer animation class? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it counts for humanities. Okay, cool. So I took the class and fell in love with animation, fell in love with, uh, you know, video production, cinematography, the, the, theater all that stuff so um and created my own major and, and that was crazy i went to a school that wasn't an art school uh but i created i worked with my mentor professor and uh created my own major and uh, so i have my very own major i created uh for my undergraduate degree and by the time i went back to school for my master's they'd already developed a program into it and went forward from there but cool but isn't that the case you always learn that that last class or something and it has an epiphany and it click something in you and you're like wow i wish i could learn more well hopefully and welcome to the channel hopefully you can learn some more host uh replied uh, i'm just starting learning i'm not in the industry but want to get in my question was inspired by trying to find out where to start and um, 
I'm not overwhelmed learning how to draw. I, I think it's really, hey, listen, just to be honest, uh, host, um, got to learn how to draw. And, uh, you know, join in those Thursday uh, sketch sessions. I usually teach a topic of, you know, maybe working on, a you know, anatomy or cars or dinosaurs or creatures or all sorts of stuff. And so join in on those those Thursday chats and, you know, or go back in the playlist. I, I recommend to both you, Tracy and host, go back in the playlist and look through those and just pick up the ones that are, that are useful for you. Or just fast forward. You can fast forward me. I, I, no, no harm, no foul. Um, and, and find those topics that will help help you get going and uh, get started. I go into the basics and all that stuff. And today's we're gonna we're gonna keep it sort of low key and chill and just sort of you know if you have any questions while I'm drawing, go for it. Ask away. Um, I'm trying to find out where to start. Okay, yeah, but you gotta learn how to draw. Host um, fell down a rabbit hole uh, of learning uh, detailed anatomy and just felt I needed to take a step back and figure out what to draw. And get that gets the message across. I, I think that is so important. Just simple clarity. And we're going to be talking to a couple artists, uh, you know, that I that inspire me, and uh, that you could go check out either their comic work or their actual work uh, in animation or whatever. Just uh, really, I'm going to mention a couple people tonight, and uh, I think that's going to be help you, uh, you know, uh, keep everything simplified and bite-sized pieces. Uh, you know, the only way you can eat an elephant host is one piece at a time. So take those pieces and I think, uh, I, I had an earlier video, I think at the beginning of the year, um, I think it was, uh, you know, taking massive action. There's, I, it's one of them, I forgot which one it was, but it's like, I listed like the top seven things uh, a storyboard artist needs to know. And uh, you take those bite-sized pieces uh, as you're eating away at the elephant of knowledge and just learn that piece and then go on to learn the next piece uh, for what you're doing. So I hope that helps you out. Um, cool. Who said, uh, I took a class in college for script writing. And the whole time I was like, man, if I could just draw it out, that would make more, have more sense to me. Nah, so true. Um, Screenplay pride is really important, though, and I'm glad you took a screen uh, writing class because a, a, a screenplay turns into a sh once it's a green lit, it becomes a shooting script, and you need to be able to board, you know, uh, off a script, working with the director and having those conversations. Uh, but you better know that script inside and out, and that's fantastic that you have uh, some script writing experience and knowledge, uh, because that's only going to benefit you, my friend. So awesome. And then uh, Tracy said it went to Cal State Fullerton in California. Well, cool, Tracy. Uh, I went to, uh, I, I went and I taught over at, I think at the time it was, I don't know if it was Cal State East Bay yet, but uh, Cal State Hayward, which ended up becoming Cal State East Bay. And I was instructor over there teaching. So that was cool. Congratulations. That's awesome. So, and then Tornado T, what's up, my friend? How are you doing? Welcome to the live stream. Thanks for chilling out and hanging out. Appreciate it. And Ruby DN Arts, welcome back again, Ruby. How you doing? What are you two working on? Tornado T, Ruby DN Arts, what are you guys working on these days? So, cool. Okay, let's get into, uh, and I'll take a break every now and then, go back into the chat. Again, if you're getting some value out of tonight's lesson, please take a moment. Subscribe. Help support me in this channel. We want to help get this thing growing. There's a lot of artists that we can reach out to and help. And I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy day uh, to come and watch Polly here. And uh, to give me a moment of your time. Just hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification button. I'll, I'll, I update three days a week at this point in time. Uh, hopefully we can do a few more in the future. On top of it, I got shorts coming out regularly. And then uh, also, too, don't forget to hit like and uh, drop a comment to help the YouTube algorithm help to uh, continue this channel uh, growing strong. But uh, I appreciate everybody's support. Let's get into the flavor of the night. Okay, cool. So we talked about that. And again, everybody, for those of you just joining on, um, I started this uh, this. Uh, chat tonight based on uh host comment or you know here on the in the uh on the channel and uh i figured hey that's a great topic let's talk about how to simplify your storyboard drawings okay so let's turn this off and uh go on to the next thing and then we're going to talk about some tri tips some tricks 
um, some hacks and uh, what you can do. So again, tonight we're talking about how to simplify your storyboard drawings. Mastering the basics, that's the series on Tuesday nights. But how do we, how do we simplify our drawings? How do we get that done? Uh, Tornado T uh, just said, I'm doing the cover art for a client at the moment. Sweet, awesome, doing some cover art, that's awesome. And uh, Ruby DN Arts, I sketched and did a short animatic this past week, learning a lot about editing After Effects. Yeah, the cool program. Yeah, usually most of my um, editing that I do for stuff, it's usually I'm using either Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, and I'm porting in some of my stuff that way uh, in terms of what I'm doing. I, I, I'll do a little bit of work in... Uh, in uh, After Effects, but uh, usually I use the other the other programs for editing. But cool, I, I, yeah. I have to see that animatic that you're working on. Please don't forget to share. Yeah, if you guys got great work, go ahead and uh, share it with me on my Instagram, and uh, I'd love to take a peek at it and see what you got going on. So cool. Let's get into some drawing now. Okay, howdy doody day. Okay. So a couple of things that, that I think about, and let me turn that off real quick, is um, I'm gonna take some notes here, and uh, let me put this up here. And uh, we'll talk about a couple of things real quick. Um, and just if you didn't know this, or those type of things, and uh, let me get my blue color up here. Get a decent line weight. Let's see how that looks. That's a little thick. Let's do something like a seven. Okay. So, you know, when we're talking about storyboarding, woo -wee. my stylist is acting funky tonight. So, when we're talking about storyboarding, let's get this up. We're start, when we're talking about storyboarding, there's a few things we talk about. We talk about cinematography, talked about acting, talk about basic um, animation in terms of what we're doing, okay, and how we're doing those things. Um, I also think it's super, super important, you know, um, that uh, I think the biggest thing is that we want to be fast with line, line, line economy. And what I be, mean by fast with line econ economy is that every stroke you put down, you want it to count. And when you're doing so much, so many lines, you know, it just, it can get out of hand real quick. And so you need to be fast, but conserve that line economy because, you know, with host <coughs> was talking about screenplay and one page of script <coughs> equals one minute of screen time <coughs> so in that with that said if that's true one page of script equals one page of script equals one um, uh, one minute of screen time that's a lot of drawings we need to do and there's 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 some sequence on some sequence i've done there's hundreds of drawings you know up to a thousand drawings sometimes a basic commercial maybe 20 to 
30, 40 frames, you know, or shots. And, you know, others will just, there's a countless, you know. And then you're working on multiple scenes in a film and things like that. So you need to, you need everything to count uh, as much as it can. Um, you want to be fast, you know, in terms of what you're doing. Not fast that you're doing sloppy work or too sketchy of work, but you're, you don't, you don't, your your time is precious and you know uh, these you need to hit your deadlines and I think it's super important as a storyboard artist if you make a commitment um, in terms of when you're gonna deliver you need to deliver and uh, you know you're, you're working with uh, and if you want to keep working you need to be able to deliver that and and create value for your customer, which is the the film's director, or the 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 client, or your you know the production company, or your studio you might be working for if you're doing animation things like that, so you need to be able to deliver. So you need those efficient lines uh, to be able to deliver the product that you're committed to, you know, and that's what gets you rehired again. That you're bringing solutions, you're uh, you're a problem solver, you're providing solutions, you're providing uh, creative input. You know, maybe looking at, you know, it all depends on who you're working with. Every director is different. You know, uh, you have some directors out there that are absolutely phenomenal artists themselves. You got Sir Ridley Scott draws everything. It has a fine arts background on top of being, a, 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 you know, <laughs> the director that he is today, you know, and creating such hits. As, I know he just came out with Napoleon or if he was working on, uh, you know, the movie Alien or, you know, whatever it might be, you know, you're sitting there going, oh my goodness gracious, or you Steven Spielberg drawing his, th his, his thumbnails or doing that type of work and then having, passing that off to storyboard artists or you have uh, other board artists, you know, uh, work, working on, you know, their particular projects where they've already pretty much figured out that film in their head. They just need somebody to put it on paper for them. So, uh, some cool stuff. So we want to be able to, uh, you know, uh, get those lines down. So let me go back into Photoshop here. Let me check the chat real quick. Uh, Ruby Dian, it's over on my YouTube, uh, YouTube, but I'll post uh, to Insta later maybe. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. I'll have to check it out, Ruby Dian. That sounds cool. Okay, so we were talking about storyboarding, that cinematic, uh, cinematography, acting, basic animation, uh, fast with line economy, and one page of script equals one minute of screen time. So, what do we mean by all that stuff? And, and let me throw a... New layer on there. Throw a save down so I don't lose this lesson get a black line and what I mean by that we've talked about in our last uh, so many um, live streams we've talked about uh, a few things to help you um, you know get you know work on things we talked about shape language if I could spell right but my stylist is not working properly tonight. Uh, where is my spelling? Let's try that one more time. Ooh, we. Talked about shape language. We've talked about we've talked about silhouette. You know, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about, and we talked about uh, simple shapes. And tonight we're, we're talking about just s simplify. You 
okay? And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And what I mean by simplification is when you're when you're doing your drawing, let's just say zoom in a little bit here. I better turn off Big Paul here so we can talk about what we're doing here. Okay. One more time because I didn't turn myself off. Talk about shape language, sh silhouette, simple shapes, and for now, simplifying. Okay. And let's just uh, let's uh, go back in here to Photoshop. Let me zoom in real quick, and we'll keep it pretty pretty light here. So let's just talk about we're 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 simple simplifying these these shapes, you know, in terms of uh, what we're doing here. So if I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to, I know that the big deal right now is is hopefully I'm doing this justice. If I'm just talking simple shapes right now. We're using that silhouette language and stuff. I don't have uh, the pressure sensitivity on on this thing. We'll just keep it simple. But if I'm talking about Wolverine, and I know that Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman are just finishing up filming the Wolverine, but you're, you're just looking at simple, simple language of, you know, You know, we're, we're doing simple drawings here. Um, and, uh, you know, whether it be something like that or, you know, you, you talk about language uh, of, of, of simple, simple shapes. And uh, I've done this in the past where if I'm, I'm drawing a... I'm drawing a, a female character. I'll just keep it simple. In, in, in the line quality of what it is, you know, in terms of how we're. But I'll, I'll definitely just keep it simple. In terms of the drawing and the simpler you're, you're doing your drawing you know and you can either do it with a fill or whatever it might be the simpler you can you can tell your story you know keep those drawings simple don't just leave them loose leave them gestural in terms of uh, what you're doing and there's some different things to do if I if I'm drawing her out her you know hands or something like that or her silhouette you know maybe I'll, I'll draw it like this just simple forms in terms of what we're doing and I think that the simpler your drawings are going the simpler you can knock out your your um, images so have that character here let's just say you know I'm sitting there drawing I think it's just leaving it very simple in terms of what you're doing I'm drawing some sort of creature thing or something. We'll just keep it simple and maybe behind it, you know, we'll throw a tone or something underneath it.
of what we're doing. You can just keep your forms simple in terms of the way you're drawing. Um, going back to the chat real quick. Take a quick little second here. Going back to the chat. Okay. Um, so Ruby D and Arts, it's over on my YouTube channel. Yeah, I got to check that out. Uh, uh, when you uh, went uh, when you get a script, do you get started drawing right away, or do you write down ideas first? Okay, uh, good question. So when I get a um, when I get a script, or I before a, a project gets greenlit, sometimes I'll get what you call a pitch bible, and uh, maybe they don't have any concept work or anything like that, and uh, that's been developed yet, and so um, I, I think it's. A, super important for you to read that script. Um, read it for, for enjoyment, understanding, and then read it a bunch more times. Uh, you know, uh, I usually, if you watch um, How to Break Down a Shot List from a Script, I wrote a, a short little screenplay called uh, a, a Jurassic Time Loop. Uh, go back in the Mastering, uh, you know, uh, the Mastering the Basic series and go find that one video. I'll break down... Uh, a uh, screenplay and into a shot list and how that sort of that process works and I go from that process all the way to a final animatic so check that out if you get a chance um, but when I get a script or I'm, I'm hired on by uh, on a project I'm gonna read that script as many times as I can and um, I'm gonna try to look for clarity what is the subtext what is the the screenplay writer trying to tell the story with those type of things um, I know I will sit down with the director and sometimes we're sitting together or sometimes it's remote and uh, we'll have our story meetings uh, with the director and he, I'm listening to the director because I'm, I'm the director is the visionary of a, a film and I, I'm here to support that vision. Uh, some directors I've worked with are, are fantastic artists themselves. We can have that communication. Others, they don't know, unfortunately, how to draw. Their their their, their focus is behind the camera and working with the talent and you know other 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 areas. And so uh, I can offer a service to put what they see in their mind's eye onto uh, paper or into a you know. PDF, you know, or a JPEG document that they can interweave together into the animatic. And uh, so I would say uh, with the, the shooting script, uh, you know, I don't, I don't start drawing right away. If I see something in my head, I might draw it down, but I really want to hear what the director's take is. Uh, if it's that type of uh, system, and this is in the Hollywood system or whatever it might be working on, it's, uh, I, I want to listen to the director and what their vision is, and I want to be prepared with um, how are they, how do they see their film? How can I help them um, with, uh, you know, problem solving or thinking of shots? And that's why I think it's it's exciting to be a, a storyboarder is because you're thinking like a director. You're drawing, you know, the, the pretty much what you'd be shooting. And, uh, you know, sometimes I need to be exact sometimes it needs to be rough you know it all depends on what the uh, director or client is asking for but uh, yeah it usually starts with the script you know and in terms of uh, live action in terms of what you're doing and uh, um, I'll, I'll get my script um, sometimes the shot list is already put together sometimes it's not put together the shot list I'll be thumbnailing on the script and then I'll do my first take of thumbnails. And I think it's really important. Um, one of the aspects of being a great storyboard artist is being a great communicator, both visually telling your story, but also with your spoken and written language because you're communicating with the director, you're communicating with the team members, you're communicating with your fellow storyboard artists if there's multiple board artists working. So your sort of artwork looks a little bit the same and those type of things in terms of a sequence or whatever it might be that we're all focused on getting the same execution done. Um, so I think communication is super, super paramount in terms of being a fantastic storyboard artist and uh, being asked to come back to work again because you get those breaking relationships going. But yeah, it goes through the script. It, you'll, you'll go through your thumbnail phrase, your phase, get your approvals, you go through your roughs, and you'll then you'll get iterations all the time. Listen, this, this scene got cut for budget. Um, this might be this, this might be that, until your final sign off and then uh, you're done with your sweet sequence or you're on to the next sequence or you're on to the next film or whatever it might be. 
So I hope that answers the question, Ruby. Um, host, just checked out your stuff. Ruby DN really resonates, uh, really resonates with it. Uh, when I uh, get better at drawing, I really want to make some storyboard for music. I like too. Cool. Yeah, no, cool. I'm glad you guys are communicating. Chat with each other. This is a community of like-minded people, so it's cool. Host, I was just going to ask if gesture drawings uh, help with this, but then you said gestural. <laughs> yeah, no, I think everything, the thing about acting, you know, um, when you have a full shot, it's like the a full shot, the definition is you see the, the, the character, the, the protagonist or the antagonist in full glory, you know. It's the, the queen walking down the throne room floor you see her in her fancy gown you're getting that that money shot of all the the, the the seamstress and costume designers and everything you know uh it's 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 uh you know vin diesel as riddick sitting on the throne room and you see him on all of his glory you know um you know i, th I think gesture is so important because we communicate both you know, with facial expressions, we communicate with our gestures. Uh, we communicate. We can communicate with our body language, and I think it's super important uh, to to work on gesture drawings uh, as you're doing working on your stuff. So um, good stuff. Um, I would have attempted to draw the whole hand, but you just drew a single try and a few fingers and understood it was a hand. Even the pinky with uh, being a single eye it really cooled me. Yeah, um, when you're drawing and you're simplifying, you know, um, we'll talk about that a little. I'll go back to drawing again. But uh, you want to simplify your forms. Don't go crazy, you know. I I'm not asking for the Mona Lisa. I'm not asking for the, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, a Leonardo da Vinci, you know, drawing. You know, I'm not asking for a Jackson Pollock. You know, it's like a... You know, we're, 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 you know, I'm not asking for a, uh, you know, a detailed uh, comic page. Uh, what we need to do is get the, the shot that we need and move on. And I'll give you some tips and tricks uh, to get that done and, and, and keep it simple. I love drawing detail too. Don't get me wrong. I love putting lots of detail, but there's a time and place in your board to do it. Um, there's a quite a few just brilliant storyboard artists out there and I and you know when you're drawing that drawing you know uh, one of my tips is is if you want the, the the viewer to focus on a point in your shot that's the detail part the rest of it can be loose you know what I mean because we're not focused on that you know if we've already established what their environment is why are we drawing the environment so many times we see that hack in comic books all the time. You get this beautiful establishing shot, and then when the action's going and the punches thrown and Batman's throwing punches and you know uh, the Joker's trying to get away or something like that, the, you know I, I think uh, there's a, a fantastic YouTuber out there, Strip Panel Naked, and he demystifies comics. A uh, very cool channel. I, I, I watch every once in a while. But uh, they, they were going over Moon Knight and uh, the Moon Knight comic and, and, and how, you know, the, the comic artist was setting up the establishing shot. But then when the action came, all you saw was the action. There was no backgrounds because you remember where the character was. So you're not wasting your time looking at the background. So, um, cool. Cool. Um, yeah, um, so uh, Ruby DN Arts, was it how to break down a script? Yep, that was it. Yeah, please uh, take check it out when you get a chance. I break down everything for you. And then uh, thank you, host. Uh, hey, Maria, how's it going? Welcome. And then uh, my buddy HMT, what's going on, you guys? Glad you guys can join into the chat tonight. We're talking about simplifying your drawings for storyboards tonight. Got a large crew with us tonight. Appreciate everybody taking time out of your busy day uh, to hang out with me. If you got any questions, drop it into the chat. And again, uh, you know, I know, I know most of you that are on the live stream uh, are already subscribed to the channel, so thank you so much. If you're new and want to help support this uh, budding YouTube channel to help it grow, uh, I appreciate you taking the time by subscribing. And if you're catching this in the replay, thank you very much for watching. And I know a lot of folks, I sort of have it sort of scheduled right now at uh, 11.45 and on the East Coast and on the West Coast at 8.45. I might have to change that here and there over the next month or so. Um, just, uh, you know, whatever works. Uh, 
Uh, my schedule is changing a little bit too, but we'll try to make it work. Uh, uh, I know for sure we'll still keep coming three days a week, keep it consistent, because uh, I want to make sure we're giving you guys some great value. Let's go back to drawing here and uh, kicking back off what Tornado T was talking about. We were talking about this, this, this basic gestures, you know, and uh, turn that off. Okay, turn this off, Boom, back to over here. Okay, so, you know, one of the key things I try to do is I try to be cool. You know, when we're talking about reading the script and, and doing some thumbnails and, and that type of stuff. And it's like, I, you got to keep it chill. You got to keep it no pressure. You got to keep, you know, you got to keep focused on what you're doing. In, term, in terms of uh, what's going on, and let's just get a panel in here. And you want to keep it cool and simple. And uh, let me grab this panel, draw a few of them in there. We'll just sort of Explain what I'm talking about. And we're talking about line efficiency and those type of things. Okay, let's just say I have some storyboard panels. And what we're trying to do is we're not trying to capture every little detail. That's not what we're trying to do here. You know, if I'm, let's see, over here in this corner, and I'm sitting there drawing... Let's just say I'm, I'm, I'm drawing an eye or something like that. I don't need to draw every little eyelash. It's like if you think about line economy, it's like, oh my goodness gracious, how long is this going to take? And uh, I'm doing all this detail and I got all these things and then I got the duct I got you know and I'm just and this is what, what I'm talking about is you got all this detail and I got the nostril up here and I'm just like and I got the guy's ear it's like it's like it's just too much neat detail in terms of, of how you're drawing you know so we don't want to see that we want to keep it simple so if i'm going to draw that again and uh maybe thicken up my line a little bit you know and let's just say i'm going to draw the an eye again i want it to be simple and, and i usually just do a couple hash marks like this Same eye. Without all the detail, you know, in terms of what we're doing. Simplify uh, what, you, what you're doing um, in terms of how, how you're doing your storyboards. And uh, we call it uh, economy of line. So if I zoom in here, and let's just say I'm going to draw a um, landscape of some sort. You know, I, I'm just going to think about it. You know, I'm going to get some sort of crazy, cool horizon line. That I'll just be able to hear it be like some mountain ranges and stuff like that. Maybe the sun is out. Maybe we've got some clouds coming in there. And then I'll just come in and get some, you know, we're just talking line economy, you know. And uh, keeping it simple, keeping it... Uh, I gotta fix my pressure sensitivity. It's not working tonight for some reason. My computer's awfully slow. But this is 
It's good that we're drawing simple tonight because it's like, <laughs> gotta fix that. And here we are, we're just working it pretty simple. Drawing, and, it, and that, that's all it is, you know? And we're on to the next shot, and we're just trying to tell that story as quickly as we can, you know? And uh, we were talking about earlier about body language and those type of things. So if I'm thinking about it, I'll draw that character simple. You know, in as least amount of lines as possible, even if I'm drawing a This is where like tones and everything come into play and we're just keeping it really simple in terms of what we're doing maybe he's got some sort of whoops maybe we have some sort of shield or something like that Just keep that drawing simple because then you can move on to the next shot and you're like okay cool how do I keep that simple you know um, so I think it's it's stay stay loose don't be perfect in terms of your drawings I, I don't care if it's perfect or not and, and that's okay if you're learning how to draw and you're doing different things you know, um, even if I'm, I'm drawing a, a vehicle of some sort, you know, and uh, keep it keep it simple. You know, cars are usually a, a boxy shape. You know, keep keep that car. You know, simple in terms of, of what you're doing. You know, and how you're doing it. Glad my stylus isn't working because this is like just keep those drawings loose and simple. I'm not I'm not over here for perfection. I'm not trying to show off that I'm a great artist or anything. You're just trying to get the work done, you know? And you're trying to tell your story. So simplify your objects. Simplify. What, you, what you're doing, you know. However you might be doing it. Um, let's go back to the chat real quick. Um, ba -ba. Who says, I'm from Louisiana, this would be a, uh, could this be work from home type of career, or would I need to move uh, for better work? I'm getting ahead of myself, but just interested. Yeah, no, great question, um, host, happy to answer that question uh, in terms of uh, storyboarding and the careers. Um, you just got to decide which way you want to go in terms of, uh, do you, there's, there's so many different aspects of visual story telling you're interested in getting into comics are you interested in um video games are you interested in um 
uh, animated TV show? Are you do, are you jazzed about working on something like Rick and Morty, or are you doing something for children? Uh, you know, the Adult Swim versus you know uh, something that's uh, children's education. You know, are you working on feature animation? You know, do you want to work in a studio environment, or do you want to just work from home? Uh, and be a freelance, uh, you know, 1040 type uh, employee, you know, um, and uh, in terms of what you're doing, I, I think this is a fantastic time uh, to be working remotely as well. Uh, I'm over here in, uh, on the East Coast here in Pennsylvania. I'm far away from Hollywood, uh, but, uh, you know, I have clients everywhere. And so, um you know, for me, it's like I can work remotely, but I'm my own business person. And, uh, you know, those are one of those things that uh, we might cha I might develop into the channel, too, is, is just how to be a business person, how, how to run your business, uh, how to work remotely, how to do these things. Um, you're not getting ahead of yourself. I'm glad you're thinking that way because you put in all this work. Well, how, how am I going to generate revenue for myself? Uh, so that's a great uh, thing. So, um Cool. It's possible. You have people from all over the world. Uh, there's different artist friends out there I talk to. They they live in Mexico and they they you know go and work in you know California. You know they work remotely or uh, folks from Europe working back and forth. You know uh, other artists from the Los Angeles area working overseas. You know and uh, ev everything is possible. You know and I think with communication and and the internet and those type of things you you can work wherever you need to and even you know i'm working on a, a cintiq right now i have my big cintiq on my side here i got a smaller uh hd cintiq here but everybody's going to you know uh, ipads and using procreate and other tools and software like that uh so every everything is possible uh, for what you're doing today and where you can go in the future uh with what you're doing so back to the lesson any good, good good chat going on tonight so thanks everybody for a great chat and uh, some really good questions and I appreciate y'all hanging out with me if you got any others drop them in the chat drop them in the chat cool let's continue uh, drawing here I'm gonna turn these things off and uh, I, I think one of the I think what would be sort of cool, get my blue out here, throw this text down. And because it's not going to be up on the screen very long. Let me drop this down to like a 12 point and we can talk about this. So let's talk about it. Um, I, th I think some other goals would be loose, not, not perfect. Let me put a little... This not perfect would be a, a cool little thing there. Like we said, uh, we want uh, to say a lot with very little line work, implied lines. Um, let audience. Let the audience fill in the blanks. Um, your your uh your perfection uh it's uh, so when we draw lines and things like that um <laughs> don't use a don't use a user use don't use a ruler don't use a ruler imply perspective even if you're not good at uh, uh, one, one, two, three point perspective. Uh, whoops, I'm sorry. I got to turn that back off again. Getting away from myself, friends. Cool. Okay. So, w w what I was discussing was uh, a goal would say, say a lot with very little line work. Okay. Um, loose, not perfect, or some cheats, implied lines. So, 
you don't have to draw every little detail. Let the audience fill in the blank of the character or use uh, shape language and some other things. Um, you know, don't use a ruler sometimes, even though, you know, I, I carry a ruler here, I have it that I put on my tablet and stuff like that, or use rulers on the Photoshop or whatever I'm working. And imply your perspective. You know, you don't sit there and need to draw, and I'll do some examples of this. You know, um, you know, it doesn't have to be realistic either. Abstract can be okay, and um, I, I think those those are super important things to, to little tips and tricks, you know, um, in terms of your line economy, you know, in what you're doing. I think another thing too is. Um, We want to we want to clarify. We want to stay loose, and I, I think tones tones could add detail. Okay, um, and what I mean by that, and I'm going to do a little exercise here. We're going to storyboard a little sequence. Uh, of a sort of a, a gunfight or something like that and uh, where we want to just we I think clarity and storyboards needs you need to be clear in what you're doing you need to stay sort of loose and gestural and then, and then you could add a little bit of tone we're gonna play around a little bit with that um, let me see here so we're just talking about yeah not a problem host um, so host was just uh, going back and forth while I'm talking you guys are super uh, adding a lot of great value in the chat so I want to be able to take a minute and answer those questions so uh, tornado T says I'm drawing and following along cool um, host says perspective and foreshortening are things I still need to work on my drawings are pretty flat cartoony looking for what I'm trying to do yeah um, foreshortening will help that um, when you draw one side, okay, so if I'm drawing a, a character and the left side is exact symmet symmetrical with the right side of whatever your character is, it's going to be flat. Um, get yourself to, if this hand's this way, this hand's opposite. You know, have, if you're drawing a woman, the, the shoulders and, and pelvis are tilting. There's a, a bunch of different little tips and tricks and drawing things that I, I would probably recommend you learn how to do uh, to get those type of things and we'll do a couple in our exercise here uh, Tracy just said uh, when drawing loosely how do we maintain emotion and should we focus on uh, on to show story without losing so much detail uh, I, I think if you're focusing you know here let me give an example of that too um, so with Tracy had a good question there turn this off real quick So Tracy was talking about emotion in terms of uh, how, how we're drawing. So let's draw that face here. And Trying to keep it simple. terms of this character and 
and we can still get some gesture and some and some drawing structure in there but So if we're drawing that that sort of sequence here, you know, we can keep that that gesture and that 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 image sort of simple in terms of how we're drawing. If we're gonna, there's not a lot of detail in here. Oops. Terms of, in terms of the shot we're doing. So maybe the, 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 the that's there. Let's um, We want the focus to be on the character. And then we get the focus by having her pop out. We're using really just simple simple shapes here. Just some basic fills and things like that. You know, to keep that shot really simple and focus. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. And I keep forgetting. Where's Maria when I need her? <laughs> she keeps reminding me. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sitting there drawing. Hey, Pax and I. Cool. So this is what I'm, I'm, I'm sort of explaining. Let me go back to the chat in a second. So um, I'm doing the drawing and keeping it pretty simple, you know. So I, I did the shot of the girl there and, uh, you know, we, we kept it sort of simple there. We're using some simple, simple shape language, give her some background. My focus is on this character. I want to stay focused on her and, uh, you know, that, that, that the image is going to her. So... Um, So it looks like something like that.
that sort of helps helps our, our vision. We just knock out the shot and move on to the next shot. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Tracy, uh, for what you're doing. Um, Pax Knight, hello, how are you tonight, Pax Knight? Glad you can join in. Yesterday I was going through some of my uh, old sketches and observed that my older sketches had more visual appeal, but a lot of technical mistakes. And my current ones are technically fine, but look dead. Oh, well, that's an interesting uh, question uh, or a point. Um, so t older stuff has visually appealing, but lots of technical mistakes. And my current ones are technically fine, but look dead. Um, I, I would say um, look at perspective, look at angles, um, look at your line weight and, and how you're drawing. Um, that's a good question. Um, I see some board artists, um, they, they sometimes they, they use a um, jittery lines to, to, to create that energy. You know, uh, when they're drawing to, to get some movement in terms of uh, what they're doing. And so they, they'll have they're a little bit sketchier, not so fine line. There's a couple things to, to try that out. Uh, but we'll keep working on that. Uh, I'm glad you got the technical ability rolling there, Pax Knight. And, and you see the improvements there. You just got to bring the, the, the pizzazz back to that you originally had. Tracy, yeah, thanks, Tracy. I got that uh, back there. Yeah, that's what's happening for me, too. Same thing with host. Cool. Yeah, um, I, I think some of those challenges is watch your poses. Watch, you know, I think the gesture and having the, the those, those images. We'll draw a couple other characters here uh, so you can sort of play with that. And, and it's it's like have the technical ability, but also we sort of lose. Uh, there's there's a couple of storyboard artists out there that I that I that I love seeing their work. It just looks so energetic, and I think it's uh, part of that is uh, using that that those different lines like this um, to 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 uh, to draw. We'll we'll try that in a second. Cool. Everybody was telling me to get the screen on, so I got it back on. Cool. Uh, yeah, loose and focusing on emotion. That's true, Tracy. Uh, is keeping it loose, focus on emotion, show how your character is feeling versus trying to, to have the pose to be so technical. This is what I've uh, heard from other artists. That, that is super true. Uh, um, I think I think it, uh, it is so important. Uh, stay gestural, stay flowing. It's okay if it's broken in terms of anatomy or those uh, those type of aspects. Um, let's play with that a little bit. Okay, so there's so many people teaching so many different things. And I just say you got it has to whatever works for you. And so if I, I'm drawing, a, um, let's just say I'm drawing a, a female figure. Let me delete that again. And, and we're always talking about shoulders and hips. And I, I sort of have a and for a woman, their hips are going to be bigger than the shoulders. And I'll just I'll draw simple. My uh, pressure tablet isn't working great right now. And I'm just saying sort of gestural. In the simplest form.
So if we're drawing a, a character here, I'm just keeping it very gestural and sort of sketchy in a sense. I'll fill in some So you get the idea of keeping it, you know, you got the form down, but you're just keeping it pretty simple to what you're doing. When we were talking about males. It's some sort of And keep it sort of structural but just keep it simple too you know you can always come back and get rid of some of your forms there to keep it simple Get rid of all the lines. There's a lot of ways you can draw. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Uh, I think uh, I used to think, oh, I should be drawing better before I put my ideas on paper. Now I realize that both concept and technical skills go together, but I don't know how. I, I, I would say when you draw it, Technically, it's it's great, but if you're just doing board work, Pax and I, just just get it out. I, I think um, uh, Jake Parker came out with saying, uh, uh, "Finish not perfect." If you haven't seen that that video that Jake Parker did, um, it came out many years ago. Just look up Jake Parker. Parker, he's the uh, creator of the uh, Inktober 
uh, series in October where people are doing ink drawings. But uh, I think it, I think our perfectionism gets the best of us at times. And uh, if you go back into how, how to get out of a, I just did a recent uh, live stream on how to get out of a, a writer's block, and, or it's not a writer's block, artist block. And um, one of those things is stop comparing yourself. Um, there's a lot of talented people out there and a lot of us have been doing this for a really really long time and uh, it, it's not I, I, I my best advice I give myself I see some fantastic artists out there that no matter what their work is it just looks amazing and uh, I, you don't get to see all the thumbnails and uh, I was talking to another pro and it was like you, you don't see all the hard work like this is this isn't something I'd probably put in a storyboard if I'm doing roughs and thumbnails and those type of things but it, it's all the hard work that nobody ever gets to see it's all the thinking process it's those type of things uh, to get you going and I, and I think it's important uh, just to get it done you know throw it down let it stick you're gonna get better in time this is a this is a, uh, a marathon not a sprint becoming a, a professional artist and no matter what your nature of or you're a budding filmmaker or you're a story you want to become a storyboard artist it, it takes time be kind to yourself you know um and don't compare yourself it, it's almost best don't look at other people's work just be you because when you start looking at other people's work you start copying their work and and, and there's Thing, yeah, there's things to learn, but it's like you lose your voice. You lose your potential of what you could be doing. So um, I, I, and at some point in time, it's like, just get it done, you know, uh, put it out there. Uh, let it stick. Um, art is very, uh, uh, I'm trying to find the right word. It's very um, opinionated what we think good art is and what bad art is and are you perfect on perspective or can you draw beautiful women or beautiful men or you can draw puppies really well <laughs> you know it's 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 all subjective in terms of what quality is and what isn't you're we're here to tell stories as a storyboard artist and as long as you're telling the story you're making impact and uh, i've seen you know, uh, you sit there and look at some of the, you know, early Pixar movies drawn on dinner napkins, the storyboards and character designs on napkins, you know, using an ink pen. So uh, be kind to yourself, reward yourself, just get the project done, get it done. You know, the market will dictate if it wants to buy it or not. You know, uh, why is this painting worth so much? And this isn't a beautiful painting, technically perfect, but it's not worth anything. So, um, there's a few things there, so uh, just just some words of wisdom, my friend. Um, oops, we got a good chat going on here. Screenshots, please. Got you, Pax. I feel it's because I'm trying one way. Tracy says, "Pregnant." What helps a lot is keeping it loose, focused on emotion. Sugar, yep, yeah, that's true. Uh, I guess when you're thumbnailing, it helps. Yeah, thumbnailing is 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 pretty cool. And I think thumbnailing is always good. I used to think, oh, I should be drawing. Pax Knight says, I think it should be drawing better before I put my, yeah, we we're just talking about that. It's also, this, Pax Knight says, it's also the sole reason I stopped drawing concepts and stories because I think I'm not good enough. Well, I, I, that, I would say get out of your own head, Pax Knight, and uh, just make it happen. Um, Tracy says, I have problems drawing dynamic shots, even as thumbnails. I feel my scenes... I uh, feel really flat and steady cam like um, what I would say is um, start we're, we're going to do a couple shots real quick of uh, perspective and how to fake perspective grids um, we'll do that in a second but uh, uh, change change your shot you know and there's a lot you can do with a simple flat uh, drawing to make it look cool you know uh, and uh, we'll, we'll give some tips there in a second um, Pax Knight uh tracy don't ever think you aren't good enough every artist starts with an idea don't limit yourself to it also it's trial and error uh you keep coming here is already a step yeah no so true and uh, i appreciate you uh jumping on board packs tonight and, and learning and uh we're here to help each other and uh anything i can share <clears throat> from my experience and, and and do check out my instagram Get some ideas of because I, I sometimes I'm just drawing with sharpies and number two pencils. Uh, I try to mix it up and not use all fancy equipment or fancy stuff. 
and we got to put the we got to put uh, the pencil mileage in. So please join up in our uh, story, you know, our, our uh, sketchbook or sketch jam sessions. Um, I think it or it's it's called sketching after hours. You're you're welcome to join any time on Thursday night or watch the the live streams on Thursdays just to practice. Um, I think it's uh, those are some great words of wisdom, Tracy. Thanks for sharing that with Pax Night. I just feel like I'm not doing justice to my ideas. Well, we all got to start somewhere. If I go back <clears throat> and look at early sketches, let me pull out an old sketchbook. And uh, let's see here. Let's see what I got here. We all have to start somewhere. Just trying to find some old. You know, we all have to start somewhere and, and practice. I'm just looking at some ideas. Looking through here to see if there's something I can share with you. You know, uh, here, let me go into full screen real quick. But just, you know, we all have to start somewhere, you know, in terms of our drawings and things like that. And we're, we're always studying. That's where, you know, uh, practicing and... Uh, Doing cool stuff and just trying new things all the time. Um, when I st first started, uh, you know, you sort of get ideas of different characters and designs and things like that. Um, you're constantly in improving all the time. You always have to be studying and see what else I have. Uh, you know, and you're talking about concepts and things like that. I had a whole animation thing I was working on. And just just those notes and ideas and, and you gotta practice, you gotta put the that, that, that knowledge in, you know, and I'm, these are these are super old, but you know. And just show like just early storyboarding these are just in my sketchbooks and things you got to put the time in you got to put the practice in you know you know we were talking about emotion earlier and trying different things you know you have to put the time in I'm trying to see if i dated some of this stuff and uh, i was working on this uh, one cartoon idea i have had some cool ideas and some great concepts of different characters. I like always like this character here. She was this band uh, bandita with an eye patch. <laughs> but you got to start somewhere, and you have to take these crazy drawings. And you know, we were talking about gesture and stuff like that. And you know, these are some super old cowboy drawings and things like that from a long time ago, you know, and you're just working on, you know, anatomy, you're working on gestures, you're working, you got to put the pencil mileage in. You know, just drawing dynamic poses, you know, and those type of things. So you just got to put the time in. This is right. I didn't date this one. Huh. You know, we're even talking about horses and gesture and stuff like that. Let's see what else I got in there. I'm going to go back to drawing. Do, 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 do. I hope this helps and gives you some fundamental stuff. 
see what else I got in here for you. Even trying, even changing that style. You know, just keep stretching yourself. Even the way you draw and, and trying different drawing styles and things like that. Always be challenging yourself. But I've gone through some so many different styles, you know, in the sketchbooks and stuff. But keep practicing. Keep practicing packs and I. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it, buddy. Okay, let's see here. Do you have any of your early? Yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to do that. Let me see here. Um, sorry, I got lost in the. Just keep at it, Pax and I feel. Thank you guys. Yeah. Yep. Thank you so much for trying to learn. Yeah, just keep learning, Pax and I. Uh, do you have any early? I would love to see that. Pretty. Yeah, we'll have to do a video for that, and just I'll have to bust out all my stuff. Go through old stuff. Uh, but yeah, it'd be fun. I, I did a lot of different cool things in the past. Comic books to interactive comic books with Jackie Chan and all sorts of cool stuff. So I'll have to do that. Cool. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Cute sketches. I have to head out. Yeah, no problem, Tracy. We'll catch it. Catch the replay. I'm going to do one more little quick demo here, and I'm going to call it a night. It's going on two, you know, almost 1.30 in the morning over here. Uh, let's see, so Tracy said, cute sketches, I have to head out, but thank you so much for your time, Paul, first time here, and I'll be back, uh, I'll also follow your Instagram and check it out, yeah, please do, and yeah, share your work, and uh, keep in touch, appreciate it, Tornado 2, love the tunes, Tracy will come back to watch the recap of what I missed, uh, and if you go back and review thumbnail and dynamic poses, thank you, have a good night, cool. Um, as a student, my ambition was to become an all-rounded artist in a short time. I realize how long my art journey is going to be, and I'm glad about it. Yeah, I, I would say enjoy the journey. It's a marathon. But you'll get those little sprints of, of cool stuff where people will hire you out no matter what the, what's going on. Uh, Tracy says, love the Cowboys. Cool. Uh, cool. Those are some beautiful gestures and a problem. Yeah, have a good night, Tracy. Very helpful to see early drawing. I, I don't keep any drawings I've made, even when I was a kid, uh, which kind of sucks. If you want to go back, I've been saving my artwork. I, I remember seeing my high school artwork, and I have some elementary school stuff. I remember uh, doing some, I had a buddy of mine in, I think, fourth or fifth grade. We do comics, and uh, we do crazy joke comics, like comic strips and stuff like that. It, it, it's, a, it's a whole journey, you know, in terms of everything, if we go back. Uh, let's see. Will you redraw your old sketches? Is it a good idea to post my stuff? Yeah, I think um, that was a good, good little say, Pax. I think you know, like working out of the gym. Yeah, no, hey, that was a great um, great point there, Tornado T. Uh, I think it's like working out at the gym. Each time you draw, it's like doing a set of reps. Each time you go back and do more reps, you get better. Yeah, I... I I, I, I use the reps anal, uh, analogy too, Tornado T, but the other one I use is pencil mileage. You got to put in the pencil miles, you know. Um, you got to put the mileage in on that pencil. To the, the nibbin, you got to keep going and keep drawing miles and miles of lines uh, to, to learn. But uh, I think with uh, channels like we're trying to create here, I think it'll help you get a little bit quicker because. I originally created this channel because I didn't have anybody showing me what to do. I went to, I didn't go to art school. Yeah, I took some art classes, but I wasn't at an art college or an animation school or anything. And a lot of these things I had to teach myself how to do. And one of the reasons why I wanted to create the channel and sort of take my time here is to share uh, my journey and my story uh, with you guys and my processes. And if it could help you, and to help you catapult and kickstart you up, hey, fantastic job, mission accomplished. 
uh, is it a good a good a good idea to post my stuff online? I, I think it, it's uh, I like posting online um, regularly and on my Instagram I usually post regularly. Um, it just keeps me accountable that I'm drawing, I'm, I'm producing work. I don't care if it's good work or bad work. It's not uh, anything that I have in a film or a professional, but it's like just stuff I'm working on, stuff I'm interested in and, and those type of things. Uh, Ruby DN Arts, uh, heading out. Good night. Hey, have a thanks so much for joining Ruby DN Arts. I uh, appreciate you joining in again. Uh, look forward to staying in touch, and I'll, I'll see you again uh, this week if you, you happen to jo join back in. Then Pax Knight also asked, um, will you read all your old sketches? Um, sometimes I do. Uh, yeah, sometimes I, I, I do. And uh, there's sometimes I take old, I, I use all my sketchbooks as idea books too. Uh, so when I'm writing stories or comics or other things like that, I have a whole treasure trove of stuff. And uh, I, have, I, have, I have an awesome uh, a wife that's always telling me, you know, uh, get that stuff done, you know, put it into a comic, do something with it uh, because you're, you're, you're cluttering up the office with all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, hey, listen, I'll show you up. I'll make a book out of this and make some money out of it. <laughs> let's see what we can do. So, um, so cool. Uh, Hosa, did you say working on games? Uh, what was that like? Is it someone uh, working on films or shows? Um, it was different. I, I think it's, I didn't do the cutscenes uh, for games. Um, I, I remember, uh, uh, interviewing, I think it was, I think I interviewed, uh, one I was hoping to get on, it was the GoldenEye video game. Uh, I was being hired on as a producer. I interviewed as a producer over at Electronic Arts. Uh, I, was, I was a big James Bond fan. I was hoping to get in that one. But I, I worked a lot in uh, educational gaming, online gaming. Uh, I worked for a company that was eventually bought by Disney, and that was pretty cool. I did hundreds of uh, online games for them. Uh, I created some of the first uh, interactive comic books back in the early 90s. I uh, created a work on a series. You can still see some of the stuff. I don't think it's still out there, but you can see some of the stuff. It was uh, interactive comic. Uh, it was sort of like a pre-matrix. Uh, it was called Reflex. Reflex the beginning. I worked on Reflex 1, Reflex 2, and then I was hired off to um, a quick little story. I think I've told it before. Um, uh, I, I was... So I was one of my undergraduate projects I was working on is I created my own interactive comic book. And another company had just started that was doing interactive comics because I was a big comic book artist and stuff like that and drawing. And and uh, I was big in uh, doing a lot of, uh, like, I don't know if uh, anybody remembers Liquid Television, uh, Aeon Flux, and Peter Chung's work. Uh, but I was a big... Uh, Aeon Flux fan and uh, had my own character and stuff like that and did that type of stuff. But uh, this company got wind of it and they hired me on board to uh, be an editor. They were trying to hire me as a producer and uh, I didn't take the producer job because I wanted to um, finish up school and uh, ended up working as an animator. And they saw what I was doing, and they were like, "Well, we'll make you. A, a, we want you to be a producer and, and have your own, you know, write your own storylines and do everything." So uh, I was uh, uh, finishing up the day at work, and uh, the CEO comes into my office, and and uh, I was, at the time I was waiting for my girlfriend, who ended up becoming my wife. Uh, she she was waiting for me, and uh, he's all, "Paul." I need you to uh, storyboard a comic book. You need to lay it out so many pages. And there was no, you know, we, yeah, we had Photoshop at the time, but it's like we had to, I had to mock it all up by hand, put all the boards and paste it all up. And he's all, uh, I need you to mock up a, a martial arts scene uh, using uh, Jackie Chan's Drunken Master 2 uh, because the, the deal was with uh, Jackie Chan and Golden Harvest Communications. And uh, we're gonna, uh, you're gonna be on a plane at, uh, you know, I forgot what time in the early, early in the morning to fly down to Los Angeles to pitch this deal, and uh, it was it was a surreal experience. I stayed up all night, storyboarded the whole thing, I wrote a, a crazy Jackie Chan story and all this stuff. Went down to LA, flew with the CEO, uh, pitched the 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 the, uh, the idea, and it was a. And uh, the, 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 I had to pitch, 
there were translators there that had to translate to the investors. The investors had to translate back. We ended up getting the deal and, uh, you know, we were off and running, you know, uh, at the studio making this uh, interactive uh, comic game. And uh, it was uh, it was surreal. And uh, unfortunately, it just went to a, a, sh a small little beta version uh, because I guess legally they couldn't uh, work out a deal with Golden Harvest Communications on the the, the film sequence, uh, the film sequences that were going to be used for the game. So anyways, fascinating story, but uh, lot, lots of history, a lot of uh, things I've done in the past. But let's go jump back in. Let's draw a little bit more and uh, I'm going to call it a night. So uh, happy to share these stories. I've got a ton of stories. So uh, we'll have to have a story time and sketchbook time and that type of stuff. So always cool to tell some stories and, and share a little bit. So, uh, you know, you, got, you go through it. It's it's a journey. It's not just a one and done thing. And yeah, you look at what I'm working on today and what uh, uh, I'll be working on in the future. It, it's cool. So um, you have to you have to put in those reps. Uh, that tornado T was saying, put in the reps. Put in that pencil mileage. Okay, let's continue drawing. I'm gonna give a another example here. In terms, and I I made this up. Let me shrink this down so we can see this full screen. Okay, so uh, boom. Whoops, I moved everything here. Let's get this moved back. Let's turn that off. Through a quick uh, letterbox in there for you, because so we're going to look at a, a whole shot frame here. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. Okay, so we've got a quick little letterbox scene. So one of the things to keep your uh, your boards, oh, did it again. I gotta stop. Turn off big Paul, little Paul. Okay, so this is what I got set up real quick. Um, what I have here is I have a letterbox. I'm gonna take a sip of my drink here. We're talking about how to simplify your your shots and things like that, and. Uh, Besides having um, simple shots, you know, I think simple tones, having a, a three or four tone palette is usually pretty good. And uh, I'm going to sort of show, so I sort of have a, this is a single shot. I sort of have a palette over here of some colors. So if I'm going to grab the black color. Another layer in there. And let's keep it sort of simple. In terms of the drawing.
if I'm thinking. In terms of shots, you know, uh, let's just say we have a, a, a simple shot like this, and then what I would do is just underneath. You can go grab leave that color palette up there. As we're creating this story, You know, we have this sort of warrior girl, you know, there. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, do a quick little layer comp on there. And then let's uh, Duplicate that layer. Do a couple of shots in here just to show how to simplify things.
Yeah, this is what helps to simplify your drawings and if we're trying to, to put some quick gestures down, that's all we're trying to do. Leave it like that. Let's just see how that looks. Let's go ahead and do another layer comp. Two. And then we can do. And you can sort of see the, the storyboard coming to, together. As we flip back and forth between the two. And, and, and all we're doing is some basic acting with some basic gestures some basic stuff and we're going back and forth you know for what we're doing so if we have that cool So Jose just said, adding some grays in is something I really need to start to do. I still just draw in black and white. Yeah, just to keep it because you can do. We can do some some landscapes. You can just keep it really simple in terms of what we're doing. Uh, just adding small patches of dark shadows works. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it a go. I'm doodling right now while watching. Cool. And let's uh let's throw one more while we're doing this. Let's just throw one more shot in there. And then uh, let's drop that down. How about we do it like this? Um, let's duplicate that one. Turn that one off. And what we're going to do is we're going to shrink her. that down and another layer
Okay, she moves her staff bow or whatever. Like that, turn the layer off. See how that looks. Okay, so we go create another layer comp on that. Okay. Let's see how that looks now. Just having fun with it. Cool. There's some basics using basic, simple shape language, shapes, simple tones, uh, you know, some little cheats and things like that to get you going. Um, cool. Give it to, uh, I'm drawing a thumbnail for feedback I got. Uh, so drawing an exam room. The patient talking to a nurse with a doctor. Cool. Yeah. Share it with me over on my Instagram. Appreciate that. Take a look at that business question what does a uh, work year normally look like pretty consistent throughout the year or are there gaps in between where you just don't have work uh, for weeks at a time yeah i, I would say um great question ho uh, host um i think you always got to be uh, it's sort of like you're always working um it depends on what type of environment you want to work in. Do you want to work in a studio environment uh, where it is uh, you're going to a, a studio, you're working with other artists, and it, you're working in a job atmosphere, you know, uh, where you're being hired. Um, you're working project by project. Uh, if the studio no longer needs you, you're no longer there. Uh, you can look at some of these big video game companies that are laying off uh, hundreds of people, you know, or more. Uh, you know, and because they're done with a project, or you're working on one animated show, uh, and you're done with that animated show, and you're getting rehired to work on another animated show. Uh, so yes, there'll be some gaps on the studio because it's paid on the either the, the the season keeps continuing on if you're working on something like The Simpsons or SpongeBob SquarePants, uh, but other shows, you know, you're working a few seasons and that's it, uh, and you're looking for another job. Uh, or you could be at a different studio. Uh, also, you can be um, working as a, a contractor or a freelancer. Um, and I need to, and that's what I'm currently doing right now. And so I'm, I'm out there hustling, getting in, while I'm working one job, I'm hustling to get the next job lined up. And uh, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm working on a film, maybe I'm working on a commercial, maybe I'm working on a comic, maybe I'm, you know, and you're, and you're filling up your schedule uh, you know, throughout the year of different work. So um, it all depends on, on what your aptitude is and what you'd like to be and what you'd like to do uh, within the industry. There's so many different facets that you can work on and there, there's just whatever level works for you uh, uh, and where you can bring your value and skills in terms of what you're doing. Um, you know, I would say a lot of my buddies, you know, uh, along with me, uh, Hollywood was shut down, you know. Uh, you had nobody working. Um, 
you had the, the writer's strike, you had the Screen Actors Guild strike, uh, and, and right now in 2024, it's a little slow right now. Uh, and uh, projects are, are, are slowly being greenlit again. Uh, so, you know, there, there, there's, there's gaps, you know, within it, and you need to be out there looking if you're going to work as a uh, independent contractor or freelancer. So some different stuff going on for there. Um, it all depends on the project, too, what you're working on, whether it be a couple of days or weeks or months or a year or whatever. It might be everything is different. Uh, host also said, I really need to learn some of the uh, programs and stuff, too. I draw on an iPad, but treat it like a piece of paper. I don't even use layers. Yeah, learn your programs. Um, you know, you need to know your stuff. Storyboard Pro, Photoshop. But if you can't afford any of that stuff, if you can draw on paper, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of storyboard artists out there that that still draw on paper, and that's perfectly fine. Whatever you know, the, the skill isn't going to change. We just got with Photoshop and Painter and Storyboard Pro and Storyboarder and all these other programs, TV Paint, all these things. Um, they're just tools, just like a pen and a piece of paper. So uh, if you have the skill set, you can draw on anything <laughs> in terms of what you're doing. Um, Pax9 says layers are good. Cool. Uh, do you get the character designs first, before, or after storyboards? It all depends on the type of project you're working on. Um, if I'm working on Rise, you know, if, you were, if you were to be working on a project like Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you need to be right on uh, the model sheet of these characters. You know, Or I'm working on an animated show where you need to draw Mickey Mouse exactly the same as how Mickey Mouse has been designed. Others are... You know, others have a little bit more uh, leeway and stuff. Um, uh, and it all depends on the project. I've had sometimes where there's no designs at all and you're creating some of the initial designs, you know. Other times it's already you're working with a concept team, you know. Uh, so a lot of different things uh, that can go different ways, Pax Night. Ho says, uh, I think I would be, uh, I would like freelance so I can set time aside for personal projects if that makes sense. Also, with all those strikes, prefer uh, the independent uh, freelancing. Okay, yeah, no, cool. Yeah, everybody's different. Some people don't want to have their own business. Uh, some people want to be able to go to a studio and have the comforts of, you know, the of some of that, and that has its benefit. It's, everybody's different, but there's plenty of space for all different personality and business, you know, types in terms of what you're doing. Uh, I heard it's hard harder to get work through if you aren't in a union. That's true, but I think it all comes down to skill set. You have the skills, you'll find work. And uh, if you provide value and consistent value, and you have a reputation of, of quality work and providing solutions, I I, I don't. Yes, there's union projects, there's non-union projects, there's there's a lot of work out there too. I have Procreate and just haven't dived into it. Uh, yeah, get some time. Get, get yourself a, a little bit of time here and there to uh, to, to study those skills. Uh, I think in the future we'll probably start breaking down some programs and doing some how-tos uh, for different programs as well. So, uh, Pax Knight, in my job, I have to design a character as well uh, when I board. So, is there a tip on how to approach it? So, Pax Knight said, in my job, I have to design a character as well as well when I board. So is there a tip on how to approach it? Um, I would say design your character first. You know, um, if I'm, I've worked on a lot of stuff where I've designed original characters and things like that. Design the character first. And then once you have that shape language down and you have that character mastered and you can draw them in all the different poses, it'll just make your storyboards go easier as you're storyboarding. Um, should I design first and board later? I think you can do a combination of, of both, but if you, it depends on how your client wants your your uh, design or your uh, character design. You know, I, I would sort of focus on that first. And then you could do, do little quick thumbnails and stuff like that and play around with it and uh, sort of just go from there. And uh, but I would definitely have the character design. So if I'm if you're if I'm working on an animated show and I'm working on something like uh, an Adventure Time or you know uh, whatever it is, SpongeBob SquarePants or Gravity Falls or something, I, I need to have those characters designed first and then go into my boards. Um, it all depends on 
some of these boards need to be like that as mentioned the the, the rise of the teenage mutant ninja turtles your um boards need to be pretty much exact and then they go off to animation the animation department you know overseas is just copying what you did on your storyboard others are a little bit looser so you can get away with you know a simple design of your character design and have it in the situation if it's not on you know character model sheet so there's there's different ways it all depends on what the client is asking for and what you're trying to do um uh pax i said host and pax and i were talking junior storyboard artist cool uh host pax any tips for getting a job like that is a good job to get away i'll let you guys chat <laughs> take a sip of my drink Cool, my friends. I'm going to call it a night tonight. It's almost 2 a.m. in the morning. I've got a busy day tomorrow. But uh, I appreciate everybody hanging out with me tonight. And uh, keep in touch. we got a, a lot of great dynamic conversations today. And uh, really appreciate everybody taking the time to hang out tonight. And uh, hopefully we I created some great value and some great talking points for all of you and uh, to help you uh, be successful at whatever your endeavors are what you're trying to do feel free to uh, reach out at any time over on my instagram shoot me a dm or you know uh, i'll leave you my contact information yet again uh, to, to close it out and uh, turn you to t in at any time anytime my friend um, it's not that dynamic compared to what mr Anders is doing uh, you can get it used to the process cool uh, yep. yeah no problem folks hope everybody had a great time uh, I'm happy to answer your questions yeah if you got any more reach out uh, I'm gonna leave a I'll leave a leave a close out a quick thing I, I was curious to know if anybody's open for uh, I was thinking about opening up possibly uh, on Gumroad or uh, on patreon if uh, anybody's up for uh, needing some help with mentoring and mentorship and stuff like that if that's something you're interested in, shoot me a, a DM or something. See if that's uh, something I got some thoughts about that in the future. And uh, if this would be helpful so we can go more in depth and get some one-on-one -on -one coaching and stuff like that. If that'd be helpful to you, reach out. I'd love to know. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting February kicked off. I, I'm going to probably be doing some shorter videos uh, that are already pre-put together. But I'm not going to stop doing the live streams. I think these are lots of fun. I enjoy myself too at it. So uh, let me know if that, that would be useful to you as well. Anyways, I'm going to sign off tonight. Uh, it's just hit 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'm going to call it a night. I'll leave you with my contact information. Again, if you enjoyed what you're watching today, drop a like and a comment in the uh, in the actual show itself for tonight. Let, people, let the YouTube algorithm know, hey, I liked watching Polly, and I'm going to watch some more. Uh, I have a. I invite you to watch uh, all the different playlists. Uh, right now, we got currently uh, 49 different live streams to choose from. Usually, roughly between an hour and two hours each of those, and have some fun with those. And then again, if you enjoyed this here live, or you're watching on the replay and watching at the leisure of your own time, I appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I'll leave you with my contact information. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.